Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And I'm so excited to record this podcast because I think that I thought that we had done a podcast on this topic and we have not. And so that makes it a really easy thing to podcast about. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we, you know, we sort of have rushes of inspiration, right? Like I'll think of like six well, podcast and topics. The problem is, is there's so many different venues that we speak about things yes. and we can't remember which one we talked in, you know, or uh, professed the, in or whatever. The, so the stuff you should know podcast, they finally mm. like accidentally duplicated uh-huh. an episode <clears throat> a couple of years ago. I think it was customs how customs works uh-huh and so their podcast covers like every single thing in the entire world right and they duplicated so i'm thinking so, yeah. like they sewing. would have endless <laughs> topics yes yes they would i don't think they have done one on needles for knits needles for stretch Maybe fabrics not. Though. not unless they have so. us as guest speakers that's guest right ha- a guest guest. They don't a have podcast guests. They are like us. They are, you know, just two co hosts. Yeah. They don't, you know, they don't have guests generally. Yeah. I've had them a couple times. But uh, yeah. Um, anyway, I don't think we've done one on just knit needles, and I'm excited to do so. I think we've talked about knit fabrics. Different... Well, don't say just knit needles. Say needles that are used to sew with knits. Okay. Needles that are used to sew with knits. <laughs> because it's not just knit needles. Yep. All right. Let's... Which. We're going to get in trouble for because I've already gotten in trouble for it before. We get in so much trouble. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. No, I'm we're, ready. We're getting... I, I, I'm in the hot seat. I've been really stepping up our social media game. Um, <laughs> and so I scheduled... I've been trying to step up all the games. Like, I'm really trying to get on top of everything. And, and I scheduled a post for every day through, like... So... Hold on, hold on. Let me finish, Okay. I scheduled Rrr. our I scheduled our blog posts like every day to be shared on Facebook for like a month, okay? Uh-huh. And then I also scheduled a product recommendation to be shared every day. So this is, you know, marketing, right? right. Like this is good, but <clears throat> of course, you can't just share the link, you have to share something funny and right, insightful right. You have to, to say go with something, it, right, you know? Right. And that's how Facebook works and uh <clears throat> anyway, and I'm scheduling them manually. It's also how Facebook backfires on you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> So business pages, they don't get a lot of views unless right, you pay, right, blah, right, blah, right. So, all right. So I'm sharing my, like, outerwear blog post, and I'm sharing my, what other thing did I share? And I have just got, like, mean people commenting. And I'm like, thank you so much for That's commenting. That's the rest of the world. Because it is hard to get comments on a Facebook business post. That's right. Have um, a nice you day. Know, so I was like, I was like, well, this Obviously, my strategy well, is working. <laughs> you know, don't you don't you know that? I mean, I truly believe there are people out there that just wait, like sit and think about how mean they can be. Well, they don't even know how to be mean because if they were mean, they would pass by it and they wouldn't comment on That's it. Right. Therefore, you know, really lacking it would lack attention that you're wanting for. Yeah, it. yeah. Right. So I'm I'm tripping up the algorithm, getting so the trolls. maybe <laughs> we should like just piss the whole world off and see how well we can do at it. We're already doing that. You already told people to use the three thread narrow, okay? Everyone's okay, already yeah, very angry. Yeah, that, that, uh, well, Mission accomplished. Should we talk? And, no. You know, we're not going to talk about knit sleeves because apparently that that's a horse race that's going on in another uh, That's group. for our myth busting oh, episode. Okay. okay. All right. So we are going to talk about need sewing machine slash serger needles for fabrics that are knitted. Right. <laughs> All right. Wow. So that was concise. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk about, I believe, four different types of needles here. Okay. Mom's like, all right. Oh, oh. So the first needle we're going to speak about is the jersey slash ballpoint yeah. needle. Okay. So did you hear my slash, everyone? A jersey needle is a ballpoint needle is a jersey needle. Is a ballpoint needle. Depends on the company that makes it. That's and right. Sometimes you will see both names mm-hmm. uh, labeled on on the needle case. Sometimes you'll just see jersey, and sometimes you'll just see ballpoint. And That's sometimes right. you'll see jersey slash or you know ballpoint slash jersey. You know. Yeah, and this is this is really what I have seen. I have not seen it called another name. There's there's I haven't either other needles that we'll talk about. I, you know, and next week it could change because it does. <laughs> sure. So right. what is the ballpoint needle, mom? What is the jersey needle? Well, it was created for the jersey fabrics uh-huh. or the 
what um, like the double knits. Yeah, right. N- knitted fabric. Knitted fabric. It Some does of it. the first industrially produced right. knitted fabric. Fabric that had a give to it, mm-hmm. you know, right? And it only gave in the east west direction, mm-hmm. correct? From Salvage to Sal- from left to white. From left to right. <laughs> <laughs> from left to white. Yep. From east to west. Um, it could be east to weft. Oh man! You know, all right, or weft to white. You never, you never either, know what we're going to Either come way, up with. either way. So, it was made for that. The sharpness on the needle was taken off. Uh huh. Okay, it was blunted so that it would go between the fibers and not cut the fibers. Sure. Where, when you're sewing on a woven, and you have that sharp needle, it can actually pierce a fiber. Right. Okay. It doesn't always. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, you should try and use the smallest needle possible. Right. Okay. For your always. Mm-hmm. So that you have the least piercing or, you know, the least hole making, so, sure. to, so to speak. So there um, are, I just want to say there are lots mm-hmm. of different sizes of jersey slash ballpoint needles. Yes. Um, so, you know, and I, the, I would probably default most of the time. Mm-hmm. I would have like my 80s. Right. And I right. would have... 90s. Right. You know, there would probably be like 70s as there, well. Right. I think it's a 75 for Do some reason. Do you think reason. it's a 75? Well, you know what? It depends on, again. On the brand. It, on the brand mm-hmm. and who's making it. Um, yes. So, you know, if you want to have something on hand, I'd probably have that 80 because that's right in the middle, right? Yeah. Um, on these jersey fabrics that we're talking about, a lot of times, maybe not always, a lot of times you can almost see... The knit. You see the hole. You, you see the openings. Yeah, you yes. can see the t- in the texture of on the mo- fabric. On most most woven fabrics are fairly tight. Let's face it. Right. Right. Um, if they're garment fabrics. Mm-hmm. And on a knit, they're not as tightly woven because they've got that give. That space is part of what gives it the give. Right. No. Absolutely. Yes, and absolutely. if you've ever knitted, I mean, that was actually right. one of the coolest things to me mm-hmm. about learning to knit. Right. Was Seeing that fabric blown up, right. uh, it, it helped me understand it a little better, I guess. Okay, so the one of the features of jersey fabric, how it was originally manufactured and originally labeled, is it did not include spandex or right. lycra or right. elastane. Right, you you would you would see cotton jersey, polyester jersey. Um, you can have silk jersey. You can have wool you, right, jersey. Right. You, you can, can have, have all kinds of jersey, but it didn't say, you know, 95% cotton and 5% spandex. Why didn't it say that? Because it didn't exist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you know, it may have even existed. They just hadn't put it in clothes yet. Right. They weren't put it in, in, into a fiber form Yeah, yet. they weren't putting, like, right. rubber into clothing yet, right. you know. Right. Um, right. And, you know, that is it. The history of rubber and whatnot is quite sad. And upset. I mean, it is. It's very. It's very sad. It's very upsetting how it was harvested and right. how um, you know Europeans and Oops, Americans. There goes another rubber tree. Go anyway. <laughs> What's that? Okay. Uh, so then, um, we, so anyway, maybe we can explore that some other time, or I can post some articles uh, to that. But that's very a very sad story. Anyway, these fabrics they were not made with spandex in them this gets important later so the ballpoint it's sliding around your knit fabrics it's okay um yay and then the next needle i want us to talk about is the stretch needle okay so mom what's so special about the stretch needle (laughs) well i mean it it is a ballpoint needle i think Mm -hmm. it's considered sort of a medium point ballpoint but the scarf, which is the chunk that's sort of like scarfed out of the back of the needle. You, is that why it's called that? I don't know. The machine scarfed. Scar- <laughs> yeah, like. That's, well, that's what a I, good way to remember yeah. it. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, and, and I You're also. You're welcome for and, those sounds. And the groove is a little bit longer and deeper also, I Yeah, believe. Schmidt says, medium ballpoint, special eye and scarf. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the reason this is needed for that stretch needle is they're they're assuming that this needle will be used with something that has the elastane or the lycra or the spandex, right? That's right. So do we want to talk about the anagram and spandex again in case no one knows yes, about it? Yes, what, what is spandex an anagram of? 
expands. Woo! So Get it? Fun. Yay. Yeah, so the scarf of the needle, like Zadie said, if you were to look at a needle head on, okay, right. and then rotate it 90 degrees, so you're like looking at the side of it, um, there's sort yeah. of this scoop. You'll see the scoop out, but... So the scoop's actually out of the back of the needle, but if you yeah. turn it sideways, you'll see that scoop You'll see out. the scoop. And, of course, the groove is in the front, and that's where the thread rides, and it leads it into the eye of the needle. So I believe the eye of the needle is, like, longer in it's, this. You know, actually, Schmetz doesn't say anything about the groove, but, like, you're probably right. I, I, well, I don't know, but yeah. I, you know, what it needs, what it's allowing for, I do uh -huh. know that. Maybe I don't know the perfect design of it. Sure. But what it's allowing for is sort of, the bounce and the drag yes. of the spandex. If we we covered this in our needle podcast a while back, but I'd love love to reiterate this: needles are not just for piercing fabric; they are right. thread delivery they are vehicles. Right, they are carrying carry, the thread yes. to the proper place in your bobbin system. So that groove and that bigger eye, it helps give the uh, get the thread through your spandex fabric right. and deliver it. And then it delivers the proper loop and the proper mm -hmm. size loop. At the correct time. T so, time? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about time. Anyway, Timing. Right. Time. <laughs> so, you know, you think that needle, oh, big deal, or it's no big deal. I'm using this needle instead of this needle, or oh, uh -huh. so what if I don't have that needle? It might be making a big difference in what happens. And when you see a, a stitch skipped yeah. on, on a knit or a spandex-type fabric, generally it's because... That top thread has not been delivered That's right. properly. So it allows for a larger loop to be made down there. So your top thread actually makes a loop down in your bobbin system that the bobbin thread gets to go no through. No matter what kind of bobbin system That's, you have. Yeah. Um, so it goes through there. Your bobbin thread gets to go through there and create a lock stitch. Now, we did a video a long time ago. Um <laughs> With Doug from Baby Lock. Were you Lock. holding the big needle? He's, he's The needle that's the size of your arm? Yes, yeah. and he's holding the needle, and right. I'm putting my arm through, and I get really excited in this video because I thought it was such a great visual representation. Right. And if you watch that video, which we'll link to. Someday Schmetz will give us one of those needles, I, know. I swear. Schmetz, Go please ahead. send me a needle. We want one of those big demo two. needles. We need two. One for you, one for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. But if you send one, it's mine. Go ahead. Oh, all right. <laughs> so... You, that is what the stretch needle is doing. It's allowing that. Right. That's why you'll. That's why you want it to prevent skip right. stitches. So it still has the ballpoint. So you're still trying to go between fibers. Yep. You you don't want to cut the rubber, and you and you don't want to you know cut the other fiber that's in there, and you you want your thread to go between those fibers. Yeah. But you need that big loop down there. Yep. And there, the, that rubber mm -hmm. or that spandex will drag. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that's one reason I believe that the, the groove is bigger for some reason. I don't know Oh, why. I believe you, too. And I could be wrong. So the groove on the front of the needle, right. it's almost like when a thread gets, um, you know, threaded through the needle, it's like the thread sort of completes the cylinder of the needle. And the right, needle right. That, that nestles. Groove, right, that groove is like a trough that right. leads to that eye. So that's why sometimes our needles also change size depending on the size of our thread. Right. So for some reason, let's pretend you're using some super heavy thread on like a not very heavy fabric. Right. You still might need the gigantic needle because your thread needs to be protected and carried through. Right. The fabric. That's another reason why uh, how you can check to see if your needle is in the correct position is you should be able to take your fingernail or your thumbnail and you'll know where the front of that needle is by sliding it down and feeling that groove and your 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 you know your thumbnail or fingernail or what will go right into that. Yeah, so your groove normally on most So you can tell the position is yeah. what I'm gonna say without seeing the flat back of the shaft. Yeah, so most uh that's the butt. The butt. That's the butt. The butt. Excuse the you. butt. Sorry. <laughs> the butt. The flat butt. That's right. So we we have covered so far our jersey slash ballpoint. Mm -hmm. So those terms are interchangeable, and they were made to work on fabric that actually had no spandex in right. it. Right. Now, it might work. It might work. It might. It might. Um, you might be able to get away with a universal needle in some situations. And the reason it's called universal mm -hmm. is it's not a sharp and it's not, not a ballpoint. A ballpoint. Right? It's sort of a dull sharp. Yeah. Okay. It says, um, so, so I just want to say that okay. uh, 
on the Jersey ballpoint and on the stretch needle, Schmetz says they have a medium ballpoint, and on the Universal, it says slightly rounded point. So it is uh-huh. that mid line, midway right. between. So yeah, the Universal was sort of like just the really really sharp. Ne- so it was made to hopefully accommodate lots of fabrics. Yeah, you know that's the needle to have on hand, so to speak. Sure. Um, have a big old pack of eighties and nineties, right? Waiting for you. And Universal is the most common needle sold, I believe. Yeah, and I I must say that sometimes when I'm stitching along, you know, and I won't change my needle for a while, mm-hmm. I will have gone through several projects where right. a Universal needle it did the trick. Right. Okay, but then if you are having trouble. Or you know, right? Hey, this fabric, you know, it's given me trouble before. You know, you change to those, so right. that's important. So those are we have talked about two types of needles so far, even though we've thrown three names at you. Okay, right. that's what I wanted to be clear about. Um, so, anything to add before we move on to our next set of needles? You know, I'm sure I'll have to back up and say something. I can't think of anything right now. Well, I think it's a, it's actually, it's not that, it's not that complicated once you right. know. And you know, you know. again. One of our rules is quality thread. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what I just said is if you're, I just said that, you know, if you're, um, skip, if you have skipped stitches, it often means that your thread was delivered incorrectly. And that has a lot to do with the needle, but also the quality of the thread also has to do with how it's being delivered. If you bought crappy thread, it was delivered incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. It will. Yeah. It should have never been delivered to the store and you should have never taken it home. That's right. Um, <laughs> delivered to your No, son. really. Yeah. Uh, it will, those two things. Oh yeah. I would rather sew on awful fabric with nice thread. Right. And a not very good sewing machine and have a good needle and a good thread. Yeah. Yeah. The good needle and the good thread are probably the most important things to me. Okay. Well, let's take a quick break and come back and talk about our next two types of needles. Mallory, tell me all about your dream come true wardrobe planner. I have been dreaming about creating a wardrobe planner for years. Oh, no. Since you were like eight and started drawing with crayons. <laughs> yes. I love uh, I love to sew, and I love to write with paper products and, and pens and everything. And we have published a wardrobe planner. We have a couple of different options on our website. There is a universal wardrobe planner that you can purchase for $19.99 and print over and over again. It'll help you plan any project you wish. And then we also have themed wardrobe planners. And do you know what's special about those, Mom? What's special? What? Um, they include some hand-drawn illustrations by yours truly for whatever we're doing in the self sewn wardrobe group that month, like PJs or underwear or our month of planning. Because we theme our months. Yes. So you can tackle a new wardrobe section each month in order to build your perfect self-sewn wardrobe. So for more information about these, you can go to sewhere.com slash planner and also check out the membership options because the universal wardrobe planner is included with the backstitch and straight stitch and zigzag memberships. So go to sewhere.com slash planner. Sewing out loud. And we're back. All right, the next needle we're going to talk about is a little counterintuitive. Um, and, oh, this did, pe- this, that made people angry with this before. <laughs> oh, no, people got really, I I have not only made people angry, I have seen other people make people angry about this. I know, it's great. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the. Sewing controversy. Uh-huh. Cont- controversy. Con- Controversy. Contro. Soversy. No, it's no, not working. This, this, okay, this well, work. if anybody comes up with it, let us know. Okay, the Microtex or Sharp needle. So this. Diplosomacy. No. Anyway. Dip- <laughs> good, good. <laughs> I, I like that. Uh, so the Microtex um, parentheses Sharp needle is the next one we're talking about. Now, I will say, okay, uh, that on the Schmetz guide, it says feature. Very slim, accurate, acute point. Mm-hmm. Acute. I, acute is, I think that's very important. Yeah. Yes. Uh, fabric use. So let's let's see this Ooh, fabric list, okay? Yeah, see what they say. Microfibers, polyester, silk, foils, artificial leather, yes, coated materials. Very thin, acute points creates beautiful top stitching and perfectly straight stitches for quilt piecing when precision is 
paramount. Ooh. <laughs> Very nice, Schmetz. Yes. Uh, we, so we like Schmetz needles um, for sure. But we actually find that a Microtex needle can be very helpful on a fabric that has a super high spandex yes. content. Um, I have had to use them uh -huh. in order to get a really nice stitch sometimes on something that is labeled like a performance knit yeah. that has a very tight recovery to it mm -hmm. and you know, it's very, very mm -hmm. strong. And I have said to, I have heard people say, oh, it's going to cut your fibers. It's going to cut your fibers. Okay. It might. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully not a lot of the fibers will it cut um, because it's got such so an acute yeah. point mm -hmm. that it is going between the fibers. Right. It doesn't mean it won't cut them, but there have been fabrics that, you know, the Jersey needle or the stretch needle would not give me a decent stitch on. Yeah. And I went to the micro text and I got it. Yeah. Um, now, here's what you need to know. Those spandex fibers will eventually break anyway. Yeah, and I've never, I mean, I'm not saying this couldn't happen. Right. I've not had, like, a fabric run because of a microtex no, needle. No, I haven't had a fabric run. Yeah. But what I'm saying is the wear and tear on your uh -huh. on your spandex fabrics, are, yeah. oftentimes you will see the little rubber piece, you know, fibers start to come out. And yeah. I'm, I'm, well, for instance, I had a pair of leggings I made, and I was like, oh, what's wrong with those? Look at that. Like, I saw, you know, in one of the seams, there were a few little, like, rubber fibers coming out. And I was like, well, I'll be darned. Like, what's wrong? what was wrong with this fabric? And then I realized these were leggings I had worn for two years, <laughs> you know, working on silks, which rubs and, you know, and I put that, stress on your on the fabric, and and I thought, well, what do I expect? Stuff does wear out. I mean, we've had this conversation right. before, but how often do you go to the aerial classes? Well, I take eight classes a week. Right. So like Zidi's going, Zidi's wearing these leggings right. for two years, like multiple times a week, right, probably. Right. You know? But but I just <laughs> thought it was funny that I was like so offended that I saw these little rubber sure. fibers. And I don't. There's a pair of leggings. I think you made fun of them one time, and you said, "What what do you have on the knees of your leggings?" And there was like no spandex left in the <laughs> knees of my leggings and it all like just sort of worn out like the only fiber left was you know the nylon so i would say like if i'm working on a a knit fabric that one kind of generally buys nowadays to make t-shirts right. it's probably like a 95 percent something right. and five percent spandex right i'll probably start off with a stretch needle yeah i mean to be honest i'm on the serger which is what we're gonna talk actually about next, but... if i sew a double knit <laughs> I start off with a stretch needle usually. Okay. So uh, that I kind of default, default to the stretch, to the stretch needle stretch. first. Yes. Yeah, I would say I would say so as well. So stretch needles. Uh, there are also stretch twin needles, just so you all I, know. I was gonna say there's yeah. stretch jerseys, there's stretch twins. Yes. You just said stretch jersey. Oh, twin jersey and twin stretch. There we go. Okay, okay. Oh my god, uh, I got my twins mixed up. <laughs> just like, like my children. I didn't know what you meant to say yeah, for a thanks. second. Okay. Thanks. So there are twin jersey and there are twin stretch. I don't know if there are twin microtex. I don't I don't, I don't know think I've either. Seen one of those. Um Hey Schmetz, make a twin microtex. There's twin sharps. Well, that's a like, microtex. Yeah. They call it a they, they call, call it a sharp. sharp. Okay. okay, well, I guess there you I go. I don't know. Well, there used to be. Okay. Okay, so I don't know. I don't know what they call them now. So, um I would say that I generally default to these stretch needles right. if I'm on the sewing machine, sewing, stretching fabric. Have, I have tried to sew, you know, a knit, double knit uh -huh. or whatever with that had no spandex or elastane or, or whatever. whatever content in it and not been happy with a jersey needle and went to the stretch and been happier. Oh, okay. So that has happened to it's me. It's still like that. It's benefiting from that bigger scarf and yeah, that bigger yeah, loop. It's still... Yeah, it's just, and I have to admit, I sew really fast. Yeah. Okay. And everybody, this makes a difference too on how your stitch is formed. Uh huh. Sometimes, no matter how well the timing is set, what is happening is maybe your thread isn't coming off the spool quite as smooth as it should when you're going 90 miles an hour for that particular fabric you're using. So it's it's no fault of anyone's. It's just the matter of circumstances. I also think that it's better to try and go at an even pace. Yes. 
if possible. Of yes. course, you may need to stop and readjust. But, but like, I do believe you yeah. can sew too fast. I've done it. You've Okay. I've done it, yes. It. And, and I think <laughs> I, mo- I mostly think it's the thread feed. Yeah. And I've got a free, you know, flowing thread feed, but I'm just going too fast for all of it to okay. time together. So you're you're benefiting from that special scarf when you sew fast. Right. All right. Uh, that's good to know. So, um, yeah, we kind of default to the stretch. Microtext, though, I've had this question. Um, somebody asked, can I just buy Microtext needles and use those as my default needle in my sewing machine? And I said, I mean, sure. Yeah, uh, you I know. think you can. I really do think you can. Uh, Microtex is... I really like Microtex needles. Well, here's the other thing I think that happens to us nowadays. Uh Uh-huh. There are so many different types of fabric. Yes. And, you know, it's made so many different ways. Um, And Microtex is made for those persnickety things that had, like, um, a fiber... What what do I want to say? Like an odd fiber in it? Well, or, and it said like coated a things. Coated, exactly. And, things you know. that were coated or had things stamped on them. Or, yeah. You know, this is one. I remember you, first using the Microtex like in costuming when we were using like weird kinds of fabrics. Like yes. dot sequin is great for a microfiber needle. Microfiber you know. is good right, for a right. dot you sequin. Know, exactly. Yeah, yeah gets you your know. glue. Gets your plastic. Yeah, yeah. It gets... just bolts right through it. Keeps the glue on it. You can wipe it off. You know, keep it going. But, um... I don't, yeah, I I have no problem saying Microtex could be a default. If I was someplace in, on a you desert island, have... if I was on a desert island, I would take my, my Microtex needles. Yes, okay. And um, I guess my treadle machine. There you go, if you were on a desert <laughs> yes. island with no, right, with no, um, right. Uh, a deserted island, I should a say, I guess. Dessert, dessert. No one desert. would be there. Yes. All right. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is serger needles. So the needles that we just spoke about um, were home sewing machine needles right so they had an h behind them yeah and then if you go over to your serger first thing you need to do you need to look in your owner's manual right and sometimes it's also on the face or like the inner cover of your serger it will tell you what type of needle you need and some sergers take home sewing machine needles yes so that may be actually nowadays a lot of them will even when they say they need an HA uh-huh. needle, which uh-huh. is a specialty needle, uh-huh. they will also accommodate a home needle. You might not get the best stitch, but if it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you broke your last surgery needle, you might try a H needle, and it will not hurt that machine. Now... Now, we're going to talk about our surgers real okay. quick. Okay. Okay. Let's, well, I guess... Or I, what but, did you... Go ahead. Well, go ahead. In the old days, olden days, <laughs> say I'd say the 60s, 70s, surgery years, days, or uh-huh. maybe even the 80s, okay, a lot of surgers did not use a home needle, okay? They had a round butt to them. Uh-huh. So I don't remember, you know, I think they were called DBs or something. I, they, I think they had a D in them. You need to know that yeah. that that's not a home needle and it can't take that flank sh- flat oh, okay. flat shank. So when you're in, also when you're, you know, this is what I hear people say all the time. Well, I got this serger, you know, at a garage sale for twenty dollars and it works fine. Yeah, but the only needle in the world that fits it is the one that's in it. Yeah, you have to make sure you can locate those needles again. That that is important. Okay, so we of course we are baby lock girls. Uh, you and me, um, and we, baby lock um, worshippers, baby lock queens worshippers. I don't know. I'm a worshipper. Baby lock can worship me. Well, I they know. worship <laughs> me back. <laughs> okay, mutual. We're mutual. We're the mutual, mutual admiration, uh, admiration society. society between me and baby lock. Okay, so we have the acclaim. Love you, Isabel. <laughs> yes, we have the acclaim serger, which is a four thread serger. So it's an overlocker. Okay, mm-hmm. it's just just as overlocking, and it takes an HA by one SP needle. Mm-hmm. And I hope Schmetz doesn't mind me just reading this, and we will link to this in the podcast. Absolutely, I'm, I'm going to read this because it's a really wonderful, thorough explanation of this needle. Okay, I so, don't think Schmetz would mind us giving them credit. Yeah, for, no, they're really a lovely company, and we love their needles. Yes. Okay, so the Schmetz HA by 1SP needle is also called the Super Stretch Needle. Okay. Yes. 
Uh, the Schmetz Super Stretch Needle has a special flat shank, which allows the needle to be closer to the hook. Additionally, the special design of the scarf area produces a larger needle thread loop, which can easily be picked up by the hook. These features prevent skip stitches even on highly elastic fabrics. Right. As a result of the wider and shorter eye, in combination with the widened groove, the HA by 1SP is able to sew with thicker sewing threads than the universal or stretch needle. The threads are less stressed and do not break. The HA by 1SP has a medium ballpoint, which is suitable for all kinds of knits because it displaces the meshes Avoiding right. damage to the material. Hello. Oh, that's okay. a good thing to okay. say. Yeah. Instead of nickel, this needle has a chrome coating, which yes. makes it more resistant against wear. And I think that that's all. It can be used in a home sewing machine as well in, as in some home overlock machines. So check that out. So it's a super stretch needle. So we've gotten this question in the group before where people are like, oh, what kind of needle should I put in my baby lock to sew knits? And I'm like, no, just... Just use the HA by right. one SP needle. Right. And I've sewn wovens with it on the sweater, Yes, too. I have, too. Yes. <laughs> have you? I have, too. Of course you Of have. course. <laughs> well, and this, here's Sorry. another. Well, you know, I mean. I'm, okay, let me explain why has, I'm laughing. Yeah. Because I'm like, yeah, mom has sewn, like, one million yards of fabric. And dot sequin. Uh, yes, I'm just saying. <laughs> dot I, sequin is stretchy, but it's also got plastic dots on I it. I just want to say that, of course, mother has mother um, sewn with these things. Go ahead. I will say this, mm -hmm. and I let's see if Baby Lock comes down on me about this, okay? <laughs> Not the first part, but okay. So the the one of the magnificent things about the high-end Baby Lock sergers, right? Yeah. With the thread delivery system and all that, the self threaders is they have a perpendicular needle. piercing. Mm -hmm. Right, the needle is perpendicular to the fabric. Now, anyone who is sitting in front of a non baby lock serger, mm -hmm. or actually a lower, uh, some of the lower end, lower yeah. end baby lock, excuse us, entry you, level, entry level. <laughs> there you go. Will notice that the. The needle does not pierce the fabric perpendicular. There is about a 30-degree slant to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're piercing perpendicular, you have more piercing power. The other thing that happens is your needles last longer. They're more likely not to get out of shape. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, okay, baby lock, don't kill me for this, but I hardly change my serger needles like I break one or if I bend one but I don't change them like I change my sewing machine needles because they and and the machine so so they quickly so and so fast and it's straight up and down there's just hardly any damage to that needle yeah no it's, so I I yeah. mean I'm not saying I don't have a buttload of them on hand because right. Things happen. Uh huh. You know, you break needles, um, or they maybe they are getting so old they start to bend or something. But I but, would agree with you. But I, I don't yeah. change my needle in my serger like I change it in my sewing machine. Yeah. Which yeah. in my sewing machine I would change it for every project. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I don't do that in my serger. You know, and you do what works for you. But I think that's yeah, that's probably what I do. And I've <laughs> been doing well, and I've been doing that for about twenty five years. So. And I do um, not. Uh, we are huge proponents of taking excellent care of your yes. sewing supplies, but it's not like we log hours on our needles and then change them, you know. Uh, uh, it, you know, <laughs> I just read something. It was an article, not um, – it was – it was a blog post, I believe, and they were talking about sergers and they were sewing for babies and for uh -huh. some sort of charity or something. And someone said, well, the person next to me has a baby lock and she needs service on her baby lock all the time. And, blah, blah, blah. and you know, first of all, you don't know which baby lock. Okay. And, and she, because she was saying yeah, her machine was better, you uh -huh. know, or whatever. You don't know which baby look, and you also don't know how that person treats their machine. <laughs> yeah, that's not. So you just gotta, you know, I mean, and well, also you don't people... know if some store told them they have to bring it in every. That's six right months. too, <laughs> and and a lot of times when people are recommending machines or something, be careful. Uh -huh. Who is giving you the recommendation, or who is telling you that the machine is is good or poor? Right. Um, if someone says once a year, 
they don't get their machine service very often or whatever. I mean, there's just all kinds of factors there to, to well, take into account. You know, and we are, you know, we're sponsored by Baby Lock. We used to be Baby Lock dealers. And I think we try to give the best advice we can. So get lots of advice, right. you know, and, right. and check it out. But I just keep thinking of that first Imagine I had that I had for 11 years. That yeah. I never had to have it serviced. No, I cl- it was clean. And you are a very proficient Right, cleaner. but I mean, I mean, it was cleaned yeah. and, um, you know, it was taken care of, but it never, ever, ever had a problem. And then right. um, I wound up selling it actually to someone else and they kept it for three years. It never had a problem. And it's out there on its third owner right. without a problem. And it's, you know, over 20 years old. Right. And it's never, it's never had to have anything replaced is I guess what I would say or Yes, it's been serviced and it's been cleaned. Okay, let's talk about another type of serger needle, okay, which we use in our Triumph, and that is the EL by 705, and then there's also EL by 705 CF, and EL by 705 CF SUK. <laughs> and you know what, what I love about this Schmetz article that I'm looking at right yeah. here? Is that the first sentence of the article is in red, <laughs> and it says, "Consult your owner's manual." I love it. <laughs> and it says, "Many new sergers use home sewing machine needles." Yes. Flat shank with a scarf. Right. Schmetz, Schmetz stretch, jersey top stitch, blah blah blah, are popular needle choices. So there are. They're saying that this particular needle that we're talking about mm-hmm. might not be useful for your serger. Okay. Right. But it's be. And it would be because it delivers the thread a little bit different. And And that's where the EL comes in. So then this says, once again in red, check your owner's manual. Right. Here's how these needles are different from Mm -hmm. home sewing machine needles. I love this. Okay. I'm just going to read it again. Thanks, Schmetz. Serger needles have a groove on the front and the back sides of the blade to reduce skipped stitches. The second long groove is necessary to create chain stitches like overlock or coverlock stitches. EL by 705, or all three of these needles is what I'll say, (laughs) have increased strength due to a reinforced blade, leading to less needle breakage and straighter stitches. Um, EL705 and EL705CF have a slightly rounded point for universal use. EL705CF-SUK has a medium ball point, suitable for many knit fabrics. I was going to say, SUK refers to knits. Yes. I've seen that before. And then the CF and the SUK have a chrome finish. That's mm-hmm. what CF means. Mm-hmm. Increasing wear resistance. Right. Okay. So actually that CF, when the Ovation came out, uh-huh. I remember, so the Evolution was their top of the line. Okay. At one point. Well, and we used, Evolve was even well, before that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the Evolution and when the Evolve was, we were doing EL 705s. Right. And when the Ovation came out, there were just a few people who, when we put that, chrome finish needle in it helped a helped lot. Them a lot and i don't know if it's what right. they were working on right um i don't know if there was a slight difference in the way the machine was engineered but i always just default to those cf ones and does the el mean extra long eye or extra long groove because i can't remember hmm it's one or the other i believe that it's extra long well it's extra long eye and groove oh okay, okay it, what, it could be both yes. I, so I, Yes. Once again, the needle as the thread deliverer, not yes. just the fabric piercer. Okay. Right. So yeah, it's making a hole. Great. You know, right. it's got to make the right hole. But you you got to watch that video of me and Doug. Do oh, absolutely. Making, oh, <laughs> once again, <laughs> Doug uh, and Mallory got a thing for each other. Let me tell right. you. Oh gosh, love Doug. And you know he didn't do videos for the longest time, and now he's doing them yes, for consumers, is. and it's he's adorable. Good. Um, he has this wonderful voice. Doug taught us all of our tech stuff when we went to learn how to repair sewing machines. Yes. So love Doug. uh, And like I said, he has a great voice. And so that that video, though, it shows that kind of that loop being made. If you've not seen this, if this is a foreign concept to you, I just think it's so helpful to understand how your machine works in that way. Um, So there are more serger needles than what we just spoke about. So... Consult yeah, your owner's consult manual. Consult your owner's manual. That and was my red voice. That your red <laughs> That's voice. my red voice. <laughs> and, you know, I think it's funny when, when people come onto our Facebook page a lot of times and say, da-da-da-da, I have this and blah, blah, blah. 
And no one says, have you looked at your owner's manual? No one ever says that, except me. And, but they'll say, well, this is, happens to my machine, but I don't have the same machine as you. And, blah, 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 and, and that's okay. But because sometimes it's not quite in the, you know, it's not in the owner's manual sure. that you accidentally wrapped your thread around the lamp behind your, <laughs> you know, I mean, there are things that happen that aren't in the owner's manual, right? Absolutely. It, it, it is. Or that, you know, um, you're, you know, your cat's playing with the thread while you're sewing or whatever. We should tell the story about how I said the cat's paw. I we think we have. Oh, okay. I think we have. But but anyway, that is what the owner's manual is for. If you've lost your owner's manual, generally you can go online and find it. Uh, or you can get a hold of the manufacturer and they will, you know, email you one or whatever and send you a PDF. You know, it's not as hard as it used to be in in the previous to computer era, mm -hmm. I went and had, like, Xeroxed, that's what they used to call it, my entire owner's manual and put a copy in my safe deposits box <laughs> because I was afraid, like, if something happened, I would, like, never get to know. And guess what happened? My cat puked on it. Oh, so yeah? they needed it. See? Oh, man, I still use stuff that's got cat puke yeah. on it. Yeah, okay. well, <laughs> but it kind of, like, disintegrated, too. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, now, I will say that I just told somebody to um, go against their owner's manual advice in the Twin Needle podcast. Yeah, we, yeah. We said, hey, try it a different way. Um, but also, that wasn't like a huge thing. It wasn't like, no, thread with your foot down right. or something <laughs> like right. that. Uh, and, yes, but the differential – if we could give some instruction on differential diagnosis and <laughs> troubleshooting. You mean on how to do it? Yeah, yeah. we mm -hmm. should, like, make everyone in the group – here, Facebook, and listen here's, up. Here's the you most have to be trained. Well, before. this is the most important thing about differential diagnosis is you eliminate one thing at a time. I mean, you, isn't that the you don't, definition you don't of it? You don't change I mean, every – four things at once and then go, well, I did that. Right. Because – you didn't. Right. You changed four things. You can only change one thing at a time. Sometimes, though, I will say that re-threading can be one thing. Right. Like, which, when I mean that, I mean the top and the bottom. That's correct. Okay. I will, you know, if someone says my stitch is just all messed up, I'll be like, just unthread the whole machine. Right. Rethread correct. And, and and then when that doesn't work, I say, you know. You're gonna ha you're gonna need a new needle, and I want you to rethread at that time also. Okay, so just a quick recap: um, jersey slash ballpoint needles. They are one needle. They were originally developed for knitted fabrics with no spandex mm -hmm. in them. That's correct. Stretch needles have that um, special scarf to create that loop. Mm -hmm. Still a ballpoint um, for your knitted fabrics, but they can accommodate the drag that comes with that synthetic rubber or that rubber that is in those knit fabrics right. okay to create the nice loop for your bobbin to catch to prevent skipped stitches and then we have microtex needles the um the one we're going to get in trouble the for the unexpected right. uh knit tool thing in your knit right. toolbox that might work on some performance wear on some knits that have a high spandex content so keep that in mind. Keep those in your toolbox. And then serger needles, some of which are specially made for knits, and you should always consult your owner's manual. But that's right. Isn't that my red voice? And again, <laughs> a universal needle is sold because it will sew, hopefully, on the most types of fabrics out there. And that's it's right. a blunted, sharp needle. It's, so it's not sharp. It's semi yeah, semi, they said rounded. What, semi ball, it's, yeah, they it's, just said rounded. It's between a ballpoint ball and a sharp. Yeah, this is what it is. It's so. the middle path, right? <laughs> okay, everybody. Well, thank you so much for listening. Uh, and you can find us on Instagram. We are so here com. You can email me at Mallory at so here dot com. And ZD, you want to take it away? So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.